one principle to remember with children. And you say, Swami, you are a fine one to talk about children. You don't have any children. <laughs> but I dealt with children all my life, uh, from, from my monast beginnings of my monastic life. When I first became a monk, as a novice, the first thing they asked me to do was, I thought, you know, when you join a monastery, what are they going to ask you to do? Meditate and maybe pray and uh, read scriptures or something? The first thing they said, that, look, there is a hostel and there are 40 children, 10-year-olds. Go take care of them. There are 40 children. If I had gotten, uh, you know, in, in samsara, in married life, I would have had one or two. But here, <laughs> there, are, there are 40 here. So I dealt with kids uh, for many, many years. Okay, so here is one principle to understand and hold on to firmly. Children do not listen, they imitate. <laughs> Children do not listen, they imitate. Child psychologists also will tell you, to a certain age, they do not listen. Um, up till the teenage years, imitation is the way they, way they learn. Of course, uh, in, during the teenage years also they do not listen. That's, also, that's a different matter. <laughs> So first thing is, what are we doing? The parents and the grown-ups uh, in a family, in the school, and in society. What we do, that the children will do. They pick it up. So a spiritual household is something that the atmosphere is imbibed by the children while growing up. But otherwise, a spiritual household, a household of study and prayer and spiritual music and love and peace and serenity, uh, a household of where there is emotional comfort and support and structure is very good. That's a good idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, sort of imbibe it yourself and radiate it out so that children can, can pick it up um, that way.